So this last six months or so has been a really fascinating and interesting market for silver. Post Brexit, we saw big jumps in secondary market prices in the United Kingdom. And then, of course, the silver squeeze movement happened and physical premiums went through the roof. And I have to say I've come to the conclusion that I'm done buying investment grade bullion silver. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Now as I said in my intro and the title of this video suggests, I am done with buying bullion grade investment silver. Now that is not meant as clickbait. I've seen a load of videos in the past where people have done hypotheses videos on saying I'm done with silver. But for me, genuinely, I do feel that right now the market is in such a state for premiums, for its high spot price generally, that compared with where I've been buying silver in the past in the low 15s, 14s, you know, the low teens pounds per ounce, that I feel like buying right now brand new pieces of government silver, whether it be Royal Mint or Eagles or whatever, at 29, 30 pounds an ounce plus, is not a good buy for me. It's something that I feel that I would rather spend that cash on things like gold that are very much lower in their premium over spot price, have a lot more liquidity, have a lot more ability for me to gain access to the funds if and when needed. And then the only other types of silver that I'm actively looking to buy right now are special releases, special proof edition pieces of silver. Bullion silver for me is, I think, dead in the water. I don't feel like I'm going to be going and buying a monster box of Britannias anytime soon. Realistically, the only way that I would be buying more silver for my investment portfolio right now is if I get deals somewhat like this Baird & Co bar where I picked it up on the silver forum. It was a very, very good price over spot price, certainly compared with buying directly from Baird & Co, or even buying from anywhere else at the market right now. Secondhand market silver is pretty much the only silver that I would consider, and it would have to be at a pretty low price and premium over spot. Otherwise, for me, genuinely, I am done with the silver buying. Uh, that does not necessarily mean that I think that silver is a bad thing to have or to own and of course there are going to be a varying myriad of reasons why people might want to buy silver and if you are of the mind that in the long term and I, I don't feel like there would be a problem in the long term of buying silver right now um, and holding it for 20 30 years I still think if you're buying now at the prices we're seeing right now holding for that amount of time is going to see you come really good at the end of it but for me when you compare it to the silver that I've already got in my stack which has a very, very low price compared with where things are right now. I just feel like keeping my stack average low. I've, to some extent, front-loaded my silver stacking. Uh, you know, I have, of course, the amount of ounces that I've got at the price and the average price per ounce that I've got, and that is something that I want to keep hold of. I don't want to keep pushing up that price per average ounce. It's very difficult to really know where things are going to go in this crazy world we live in. And you see so many different experts, including myself, spouting off whatever they might see fit to spout off on their YouTube channels or on Reddit or on even the Silver Forum and other places that silver is going to go to the moon and we're going to see, you know, a $1,000 an ounce silver or you see all of these very, very clickbaity titles saying silver will make you a millionaire or silver will get you rich quick. You know, if it sounds too good to be true, I've always lived by this mantra, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And for silver to really shoot the moon uh, is not something that I'm relying on. So the silver that I'm going to be holding is stuff that I want to hold for a long time. But of course, in this crazy world we live in, we just never know whether or not there will be a mad situation that requires us to liquidate or to sell our metals and our precious metals. So for me to buy silver at the £30 an ounce mark for brand new government-minted silver, or more in fact sometimes, depending on the type of piece it is uh, and where you buy it from, 
that doesn't make financial sense to me when you look at the fast sell-back price and losing a significant amount. Now, I will concede that there is growth for silver, and I do feel like at some point in the next six months, we will see increases in the silver price. I, I can easily see over $30 an ounce happening. I can easily see $35 to $40 an ounce happening, if I'm being brutally honest. But at the same time, I can also see inflation starting to get more problematic than it currently is and governments around the world in big first world countries like the US, like the UK, considering interest rates rises. And when interest rates go up, gold and silver go down. Combine that with the uh, opening up of economies around the world and we do genuinely, I've, anyway in the backyard bullion house I say we generally think, I think genuinely that there will be drops in these metal prices and if we have got a slow growth over the next couple of months for silver up into the 30s and then the supply chain opens up and the mines crack on with production because the price is high and they can get more money for their metals that come out the ground we'll see an influx of supply onto the market and then we'll see prices come down and then interest rates will go up and prices will come down even more and then people are left holding the bag with their you know, for example, U.S. Eagles, people will be left holding their $45, $50, it could be even $55, $60 by the time it gets, if silver got to $40 an ounce, I can quite easily see, uh, you know, a $15 to $20 premium on these types of items. Uh, you know, there are people that are left holding the bag with these prices, and it can happen in the blink of an eye. We've only got to look at the markets around the world this last couple of weeks to see quite how quick things can change, certainly in Bitcoin. Silver will never go to zero. Gold will never go to zero. That is most certainly uh, certainly not going to happen. And that's one of the benefits of silver. You, know, you have stocks, shares, you have Bitcoin, you have cryptocurrencies. They have the potential to go to zero, most assuredly. Uh, but for silver to ever go to zero, the world would have to have a very fundamental shift in its attitude to uh, money, wealth, and cultural history, because we've got, of course, thousands of years of uh, you know silver and gold being used as money, being used as coinage, being used as that central reserve system for everything that con countries do around the world. So, for me, I do I do feel that silver is a bad buy right now, and I see so many times on my YouTube channel on the live streams that we do, I get people making questions, going. Is buying an American Silver Eagle for £33 an ounce or $45 an ounce, is that a good buy right now? And my honest opinion is no. I do not feel like spending that much of a premium over spot price on a piece of silver right now is a good idea. If that piece of silver is a bullion grade piece of silver. One thing that I do think that is a good buy right now are collectible and numismatic items with very low mintages, with high popularity, I do feel like those are things which are more in demand. And things like the proof silvers that we've seen, these are just some of the examples that I've got. I've got, of course, as well, the Three Graces is the prime example. That's currently with NGC for grading. Um, there are countless others. Like I haven't got the silver one out, but the uh, collectible Queen's Beast uh, proof completer coins, that was a mouthful to get out. These are exceptionally popular and I'm seeing so many of the silver ones being sold right now at double or even triple their issue price. And I do feel like the proof side of things is an interesting market right now. There is a lot more interest in them. And whenever you get high premiums on bullion products, you get this feeling that you're getting better value for money from a proof item, from a higher premium item than you are from other bullion grade products. Now, when it comes to proof gov minted coins like these or the new silver eagles and things that will be coming out from the US mint, those are always going to be bloody expensive. They're always going to be, you know, three, four, five times spot price. So those are going to be their own individual kind of ecosystem and market. And it's going to be very difficult to really uh, predict which are going to be hyper parabolic and get you huge returns. It's going to be almost impossible to predict, in fact. Um, so those are the markets that maybe you should be aware of, but conscious that they are very high risk. But where I see a lot of value coming for uh, silver right now is in these intermediary products, the ones which are the limited edition, things like the Marvel coins, the Poseidon and Zeus, the Greek uh, sort of coins. There are a whole amount of them out there. Even smaller releases uh, with lower mintages like the uh, Lunar series from the Perth Mint and things like that. 
things that are different, things that are not just these bulk governmented coins. If you can pick those up at relatively lower premiums to uh, you know bullion grade products, then those are brilliant. And that's the kind of silver that I would look to buy if I was buying any. But for me right now, it is very much about keeping the cost price point per average ounce down as low as possible. So if I am confronted with buying some silver, it is really going to end up being in big, chunky, 100 ounces like this that I see come up on the second-hand market. Uh, kilo bars as well that come up on the second-hand market right now. I see them on the silver forum quite often at around the sort of 750 to 775 mark for a kilo, uh, with spot price being around about the six something like 680 or 650 mark right now for spot price silver um you know that that's or i think it's about 600 pounds an ounce right now if anything came up at spot price for silver right now i'd be all over it but you don't see that much or any in fact i haven't seen spot price silver advertised for ages but if and when those kind of deals come up then that is the kind of silver that i would consider buying but in the intermediary for me right now it is this stuff Gold is where my future lies. And of course, I do have two hats on. I have my, uh, you know, I've got my investment hat, my stacker hat, which is going to be very much focusing on gold going forward, adding that liquidity to my portfolio, adding that wealth preservation in the form of a metal that's sadly not silver. But I also, of course, run a poured silver business. So I will be continuing to buy silver at the higher premiums. Love it or hate it, I still have to and I will continue to buy silver ready for melting. It's very much done, though, as a business with that short-term goal in mind. The thing that really restricts my ability or willingness to spend high premiums on stuff that I'm going to have to hold for a long time is that I really do have to hold it for a long time to get a return on it. But of course, when you're running a small business, you don't necessarily have the luxury of that. You've got to keep the machine churning somewhat. Uh, and that is what we have in the Backyard Bullion household, these two hats to kind of go through. So when I say I am done with silver, I really am. And, and that's one of the things that I've noticed about my uh, uh, sort of video content over this last couple of months is that I haven't had as much new silver to showcase. A lot of the time uh, with videos that I've had in the past, I'd have the new editions of the 10 ounce Queen's Beasts to showcase. I'd jump all over them when they would be released and we'd get them often from the European Mint or from European dealers. But now with VAT and taxes and everything, I just can't bring myself to spend 300 pounds on a 10 ounce Queen's Beast coin when I was spending 150 pounds on them you know, before Brexit or before COVID. Uh, I remember, in fact, some of the Queen's Beast coins I've got were about £140, £135 each for a 10-ounce silver coin, and you just don't get that now. For these two ounces here, you're looking at, gosh, close to £60 for the coin. And when you compare that with the, quite literally, £28, £29, £30 that we were spending on them pre-Brexit, pre-COVID, or even post-COVID, you were still cheaper with the premiums even attached. So loads of really interesting things to factor in. For me right now, it is going to be very much about the gold. Uh, I'd love to know your opinions, though. I know right now there are countless opinions out there about uh, silver and how it's got so much potential. And I do genuinely think that it has a lot of potential still to come. But for me, I have got my stack of silver. It's there. It's purchased. To a certain extent, we front-loaded a lot of that purchasing pre-Brexit to make sure that we were not going to be stung by the very situation that we're seeing right now, these high premiums. Where will it go? Only fate knows, I guess. Really, there is absolutely no telling where things will be in the future. And bear that in mind for your own self when you are buying your own silver. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you and your outlook on silver right now. If you're in the UK or the US, there are going to be varying different opinions and I'd love to hear them. So comment down below. If you've enjoyed this video, put a thumbs up on it and share it around through your social media. That would be very helpful for us on this channel. And if you have enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing because nearly 70% of all the views we get on this channel are done by people who aren't subscribed. And if you have enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll enjoy videos we make in the future. Otherwise, have a very fantastic week ahead. We'll see you on the next one. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.